Welcome everyone again. My name is uh, Oscar Ramirez. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Startup Commons. Uh, we, are we are reactivating this uh, innovation entrepreneurship best practices webinar series with uh, a good person uh, building a great company. Uh, he is Marco Seppa, CEO of uh, Global Enabler. Marco, welcome and thanks a lot for being part of this uh, global family we are building. Thank you, Oscar. My great pleasure. Yeah, Marco will tell you more details about uh, his journey and professional career. Uh, but for the context of, of this webinar, uh, let me share with all of you uh, that Marco started uh, his career by building a pioneering corporate VC firm. And more recently, he has also helped the EU select SMEs for growth funding. I would say that Marco is, is someone I personally respect and appreciate it a lot uh, because uh, we share uh, great moments working together in the context of an ecosystem development project in Vietnam in 2015. Uh, but that is not the reason why he's joining us today. The main reason is because uh, we share a common and fundamental principle. So both, both Global Enabler and Startup Commons believe that uh, supporting innovation entrepreneurship is the best way to, to solve uh, the problems that uh, the world has and are worthwhile to be solved. Uh, understanding that also one common global challenge around the need for uh, financiers and founders to find uh, new methods and instruments to build uh, trust with each other, but also to improve uh, the matchmaking process. Uh, and that's why we also believe and share that unlocking data and building data-driven approaches are key to uh, enable this new model and eventually uh, bringing more efficiency uh, to the process of evaluating and scoring companies. So this is what we are introducing here today, EpoRadar, a digital tool to enable uh, financiers and ecosystem actors alike to reliable and efficiently evaluate and, and rate companies for funding and support. And clearly, uh, at least from our side, from, from a startup common side, contributing to the global flow of innovation entrepreneurship data that the startup commons uh, is enabling uh, basically uh, to improve the connectivity within and between ecosystems. So I don't want to extend uh, more, uh, Marco, the floor is yours, so please go ahead. Okay, hola, Oscar. Uh, hello, Helsinki, and hello, uh, everyone, wherever you are. Uh, first of all, many thanks for having me. Startup Commons is uh, working on a grand mission, and it's a great pleasure to get to contribute. Personally, I'm excited of this opportunity to introduce a potentially game-changing new tool that directly serves the purpose of Startup Commons and the needs of this community. Uh, HippoRadar is a product of uh, several years of co-creation. Uh, co-creation by people with deep backgrounds in enterprise creation, venture capital, and scientific inquiry. For example, my own background comprises a full decade in each of these. Let me, in fact, begin by sharing a bit of my personal journey to help you put my talk and the tool itself in a bit deeper perspective. I was originally apprenticed as venture capitalist, groomed to tricks of trade by some legendary industry pioneers in Finland and Silicon Valley way over 30 years ago. I started my professional career by launching a new venture capital arm for a private equity group from Finland to the newborn emerging markets of Russia. I led the firm through management buyout, global fundraising, growth to new markets, and finally trade sale and exit bond. During my 10 years in cross-border venture capital, I learned firsthand 
how difficult it is to find investment ready companies and how huge the gap between founders and financiers truly is. Next, I convert my industry lessons into a PhD. And I took on a university-based challenge to lead the creation of disruptive methods to help founders build investment-ready companies in the digital era. My university journey lasted for another 10 years. It did result in some award-winning methods, I'm happy to say, but I also learned that the toolbox available in entrepreneurship research was simply too limited to even keep up with the change, let alone drive or enable change. Global Enable Corporation was established to push the envelope further with passion to create new super tools to help good people build great companies. During the latest 10 years, now as entrepreneur, my own progress has hugely benefited from deep dives in the super hot startup ecosystem of Vietnam, the massive scale startup competition formats of China, and the 3 billion euro growth funding pilot of the European Union, the EIC Accelerator. Now, having personally dealt with over a thousand growth funding applications, elevator pitches, investor decks, and business plans from all over the world, either as decision maker, jury member, evaluator, or applicant, here is my take. Regardless of all the well-meaning efforts and all the technology that has emerged, the gap between founders and financiers is today only wider than ever. But there is also hope, perhaps more justified hope than ever before. There are several creative attempts to employ entirely new approaches based on enabling technologies such as artificial intelligence and blockchain to connect founders and financiers. Some are largely driven by COVID-19 and the current requirement for social distancing. Others are driven by a given financier's needs and preferences. But there are also efforts to build an entirely new rigorous knowledge space around what I refer to as art of business creation. This presentation marks the introduction of one such beacon of hope Hippo radar. It's global in eight plus uh, oven fresh fintech tool. But just like any other MVP, Hippo radar is a survivor of trial and error, pilots and pivots. And it now stands tested and proven ready for market take. So I am excited to next guide you to why. Hippo radar exists, what it actually detects, how it works, and how you could possibly get started with it. Now, as this webinar is scheduled to take no more than 60 minutes, and we have already, already consumed 10 minutes, I'll try to make sure there is a full 15 minutes for Q&A at the end. So without any further ado, let me get the screen sharing going. I will walk you through four key topics in this webinar. Number one, we look at where it all started and what today still prevails, a nightmare, a time to wake up from, fundraising. How it's a nightmare for both founders and financiers. We will look at where we stand, how the need for change is fundamental today. No longer incremental change, no longer just evolution. We need 
fundamental change to go forward. We will look at how investment readiness is measured and how it should be measured. It's important to lay an understanding of where we are today, the state of the art, and what do we need to go beyond the state of the art. Finally, we are ready to take a look at HIPPO radar. And I hope you will see me at the end of the presentation that there is some light at the end of the tunnel. So let us get going. First, you look at fundraising, how this phenomenon has turned into a nightmare to both founders and financiers. When you look at what happens in the arenas in the world, we have founders placing their best effort actually to catching financiers rather than catching customers. This is all taking place at the expense of business. Founders put their best minds together to create the narratives, the narratives and the tailored applications that financiers are looking for. They are studying financier interest, they're studying financier criteria rather than customer criteria. They design the perfect pitch decks. They make the perfect song and dance. This all makes it very difficult for the, for the financier to evaluate and compare. The whole purpose is to get picked from the beauty contest to the due diligence for the founder. All this leads to a severe asymmetry of information. Founders give a certain information they believe financiers would like to see. Financiers have to do a lot of work to cut through it. And by the end of due diligence, it might be too late uh, to, to really learn and turn every stop what's behind. So screening and evaluation work for the financiers, it takes, consumes their resources. And all these resources are away from actually helping the companies that they later would finance. The biggest nightmare of a financier today and, and almost forever, but today particularly, it is very tough for a financier to find the ventures that truly fulfill their criteria. And most of their resources are consumed to actually avoiding so-called wrong companies than to support those ones that should be funded and have been funded. And in consequence, the portfolio firms become subjects of mere finance monitoring. And this is of course frustrating to all stakeholders. So in short, the nightmare is real, it's time to wake up. When we look at the founder side of the equation, founders invest across the globe, a lion's share of their capacity to the pitching lane. This is all happening at the expense of business creation. And on the other side, financiers waste a lion's share of their capacity on beauty contests. Again, at the expense of business creation, it's founders and financiers so they engage doing together. When we look at the market between founders and financiers, from the perspective of these two stakeholders, founders and financiers, the market is hugely inefficient. It costs time and money to both parties and it costs that big time. We've come to a point where the need is for fundamental change. Like I said, no longer incremental steps forward are enough. We need to go faster and bigger. Here is a summary of the pain points of a growth financier's decision-making. First, it's labor intensive and it's therefore at very grave risk for human error. Second, the evaluators who are from a financier side looking into founders, the perfect pitch decks, the perfect business business plans and narratives, the evaluators and financiers are completely amazed and lack the sufficient case knowledge when they pull decisions. Each decision is by definition inadequate evidence. The evidence gathered, gathering happens too, there's too little, too late in the process. This of course contributes to a high risk. Financiers are often, particularly growth finance, supposed, 
supposed to take high risk, and this is definitely what they end up taking. The problem is that it happens at far too low return prospect. And also when you look at across the board, the return on investment of all money spent between you know, founders meeting financiers and also typically many financing programs, the return on investment is not satisfactory. And at the end, the whole process of growth financing globally is prone to criticism by all stakeholders. Founders are unhappy if they are not funded. Founders are unfortunately unhappy sometimes even if they are funded because the building of trust didn't take place early enough and they start to learn you know, each other's uh, interests only, only after the investment has been made. So this, this pulls us to the fundamental problem. The fundamental problem is this how to efficiently and reliably evaluate and select promising businesses for growth funding and support actions. Efficiently and reliably are the key words to evaluate and select. Now, let's take a look at how this happens today on the marketplace. We'll look first to start the state of art and then what is required to go beyond the state of the art. Okay, the current landscape of solutions to this fundamental problem, how are we approaching this still today? It takes place via live evaluation by internal or external teams or jury members. This is where typically venture capital firms and also public sector agencies place their, place their bets. They meet, obviously, the founders. They try to meet them as, as, as often as they can, as many as they can. Live evaluation is time consuming and it's, like I said, prone to human error. Increasingly, particularly in the time of COVID-19, we have remote evaluation taking place uh, by internal or external experts. This is something public sector financiers are engaging more, more often, more, more today than, than before. There are emerging trials which engage quick self-assessment tools. These are often put together by a, a given financier for their needs, for their purposes, to serve their priorities. These are steps to the right direction, and these are exciting, but they are not, not typically uh, pro providing uh, a generic solution. Last but not least, we do have early efforts towards uh, AI-based tools. But there are many problems with AI-based tools in today's situation. We don't have the reference database, the intel intelligence towards which then AI tools would be and could be designed. We are trying to jump directly to the, to the top of the mountain with AI tools today. We are not doing enough of the groundwork. So today's solutions, when we put this together, when we pull this whole thing together, what it looks like. It seems that all the current evaluation methods are geared to seek financier acceptance as the key benchmark. So financier priorities, financier criteria. This is what, of course, financiers happily share with founders when they ask. And these are asked by also parties that operate between founders and financiers, accelerators, incubators, various consulting, coaching programs, uh, all targeted to understand the financier acceptance criteria. And founders are eager students. They are the best capacity we have on the planet. The entrepreneurial superpower is all directed to seeking financier acceptance, learning how to get, how to catch the financier. And the solutions are, are based on case specific, you could call them one time individual evaluator perception which are applied at varying scales. When you think of 
a given venture capital firm. There you, of course, have a team, like let's say three, five, seven individuals putting your wisdom together. At least you have a team effort. You, you start to develop them and create a team scale. It, it has sustainability over years. And that's why venture capital organizations sometimes can sustain and run a nice operation. But when you have uh, operations leaning on individual evaluators, remote evaluators, this gets more difficult because people have different perceptions, different scales and scoring, it gets very tricky. And it's very often, frankly, unfair to the applicants what happens. Perhaps most regretfully, the current solutions that we have on the market, they do not generate any useful comparable data if they generate any data at all. So to go beyond state of the art, what is the take? How should investment awareness be measured to go beyond? to seek for the fundamental change that is required and that is necessary. The suggestion, the learning, the lesson is, it should happen with market acceptance as key benchmark. Founders should seek market acceptance. But founders don't seek market acceptance as long as financiers require for them to seek financier acceptance. Investment readiness should be geared, however, to the extent to which a company sub subscribes to and, and fulfills market acceptance criteria. Second, the evaluation should be based on comparable rating algorithm. Now that's the question, where does that come from? Is it that we, we, we call the one person who's made the most uh, investments and ask this person's algorithm to be written down? Is it we call venture capital firm, a given firm, a number of firms to ask somehow their algorithm? But isn't it so that then when we call these financiers, we would then go after technically the financier acceptance based algorithm? So where then should we seek and, and go for? this algorithm and where can we find this algorithm? This is a key question to you all. How can we find that algorithm? Who produces that? What actually, what knowledge base sustains and produces this critical algorithm, the base, knowledge base for this algorithm? It should nevertheless be based globally the evaluation on a comparable rating algorithm. Third, it should build a growing reference database. When we start to have this growing reference database that is relevant based on comparable rating algorithm, seeking market acceptance, now we start to have elements for AI tools to actually kick in and start to create tremendous value. We can add robotics. We can do many things that help us and save the human labor in evaluation. But before, the, before we are ready for AI, we need to do some legwork. And there, my friends, we have HIPPO radar. We have some pile of work already conducted. We have massive research behind us. And nonetheless, we just humbly say that HIPPO radar to us looks like light at the end of the tunnel. Now, let me walk you through the story a bit more in detail of what HIPPO radar is made of. And maybe we start by what it actually detects. We call it HIPPO radar for a reason. Radar, of course, everybody understands. But HIPPO, I think most of you think of, a, of an animal in Africa. It doesn't really matter. Uh, in fact, it's, of course, almost cozy to think that there is this kind of identity of an animal in Africa. We all have learned of gazelle, gazelle corporations. We've learned of gorillas. And now you think we come with the story of a hippo, like thinking of the hippo in Africa. Not quite. 
hippo, of course, in Africa looks sort of a cozy, but is, as we know, as an animal, quite dangerous, uh, kills more people there than any other in Africa. So enough of that. But nonetheless, we are not, we are not scared for, for also you thinking of it. It gives you something to think about at least. But now let's look at our hippo here. So what is our hippo? Our hippo is an abbreviation and it's short for high impact and profit potential opportunity. So hippo comes from these words, high impact and profit potential opportunity. So hippo is a business case with potential for both high impact and high profit. It is an opportunity, a business opportunity with these dual purposes. It's almost like a transformative uh, business potential case. We could also say that a hippo is a potential unicorn. There's another animal, if you like, unicorn. Imaginary animal, of course, much more than a hippo. A hippo is a potential unicorn, yes. Or it could be a missing piece of another great company. So how do we then look at hippos more literally? We say that hippo can have the shape or form of a university innovation project, or it can be hiding in that kind of project. A hippo can have the shape or form of an internal corporate venture. This is important to understand. Also, SME restart projects. Let's say second generation, third generation of family businesses. Sharp young minds, they come to, to mother and father in the company or grandparents to say, hey, we have some ideas of how to get this company going, back up going with these deep technology findings we have. So Hippo can be hiding in an SME restart project. Of course, most logically, a Hippo can take the form of a startup. Most more likely a scale up. Nonetheless, it is very important to understand that not every startup is a Hippo. But then on the other hand, every enterprise should find a hippo now from inside or outside the firm and become a hippo company. So there is some fundamental thinking behind hippo radar and the concept. In, in some deep level, hippo is actually giving an identity to what this is all about and suggesting that we actually should all be after hippos, not startups or innovations. In short, then, hippo radar is for hippos. There we go. And hippo radar, what it does, it turns the game around for founders and financiers. Let me try to put this in some, some, some pictures and words here. So again, today, founders have to accept that they are judged by external evaluators, always busy, often, understandably, ill-informed of the case, uh, experts at the desk, a desk study. So this is the current reality. Founders, they have to invest a ton of money and time to prepare those documents. That's what they do. They send them off to, to trying to get the attention of financiers. Only a fraction of this work bears fruit. Only a fraction of those millions invested in business plans and applications actually bear fruit and be successfully leading to, to transactions and raising of financing. So a lot of money is wasted on the pitching lane, like I've been stating. So HIPAA radar 
engages and trusts the founder teams themselves as analysts of their own business cases. The important part is Hipporeda engages the founder teams, he trusts the founder teams to gain trust in return. And this is the magic that actually happens. When you trust someone, that they may trust you back. You could try that in your, we tried that I'm sure in our personal lives. Sometimes happens when you trust someone, they trust you. It doesn't of course always happen like that, but it helps if you trust first for them to trust you. So then he paraded at the end somehow magically. It turns a few hours of founders time into new strategic intelligence to both founders and financiers. This one slide tries to capture it all, but let us take a little bit more deeper look also what then happens and why this happens, how this happens. Hippo radar builds on hippo meter. A hippo meter is the founder interface of hippo radar, the fintech tool for founders. Hippo meter is an actual tool, almost like a hammer or a saw or a drill. Hippo meter is the device by which you measure the height of a horse. That's what I learned from the people who do the horseback ride. So hippometer is also this kind of conventional tool by which you can actually measure the height of a horse. So, okay, our hippometer is a device with which you can measure the height of your hippo, of your promising business case. So hippometer is the tool that enables you to, to measure that. So what Hippometer does, it helps founders to efficiently and reliably diagnose their business case across seven core elements and 35 core strategic assets with highly visualized results. Hippometer builds on a mountain of knowledge. Hippometer is just the tip of an iceberg. Uh, there's a lot of uh, basic research research on business creation, company formation behind Hippometer. And Hippometer is the algorithm that enables you to measure the investment readiness and growth potential of a Hippo. So the Hippo radar is a tool that engages a founder team, each individual for say two hours for private online judgment using the Hippometer tool to measure certain aspects of, of the business case. When you spend this, uh, this time, it yields an automated Hippometer report. And this Hippometer report underscores the importance of discovering shortcomings, gaps to fill, instead of dwelling on strong points and advantages only. So not to, to help you create a pitch a perfect pitch deck, but rather to see what you are missing, what you need. And this is something if you share this and let the financiers see what you need, they might help the financier on the other side to concentrate in trying to find and finding those ventures who have shortcomings that they can help fix. And it can help financiers to actually differentiate between the types of shortcomings, each of them can help fix. Last but not least, Hippometer process helps founders engage multiple voices into the evaluation, into the strategic decision-making. It helps the teams to align insights and improve transparency. And this whole process in, in all of our experience tells us that it inspires the teams to improve themselves, improve their, their situation. Also that they more easily accept evaluation results 
when the evaluation results are based on the founders in its company, honestly and factually and evidence-based, perform a measurement of the same algorithm. It's easier to, as, to accept an evaluation res result, which is conducted by peers on their own companies, rather than external evaluators. And this whole process helps build trust with financiers. So HIPPO radar is light at the end of the tunnel. Here you can see a radar view. Here is real data of 35 companies. You see color codes, you see seven columns from opportunity to ownership. Under each column, each of the seven, you have actually five more columns. These are the 35 strategic assets of each company. Here you see a line, a black, black line under company number 10. This is showing you a, a threshold where a financier may have, may have drawn their line for funding. So what HIPPO radar does at the end, it automates the evaluation and rating of ventures seeking for funding and support. From a financier perspective, it automates. Yes, founders will have to do work, yes, but the work they do is business creation work for themselves, benefits them the most. Hippolyta provides highly reliable results, a comparable scoring of 35 strategic assets. Interestingly, the algorithm has been designed and it's been proven to work across industries, technologies, development stages, and business models. Of course, there will be versioning, there will be localization of hippometer going forward. But today, it, as it's designed, it does a very good job across sectors. Hippometer, Hipporadar helps find and select the right ventures based on each financier's own criteria. This is also a very important notion. There is a proof of concept, the mountain of knowledge I was referring to. So there, there are deep roots behind these discoveries. Uh, it, those of you who, who know technology readiness levels, here is just for your amusement. The first, uh, first formal steps took place between 2001, 2011, from TRL 0 to TRL 2. So we did some scientific conceptualization on all of our deeply practical findings. Initial proof of concept took place between 2011 to 2018. And then the past few years have been fast development, digitalization of the tool, of the algorithm, and putting it to work. Formal pilots have engaged 35, the formal pilots have engaged 35 companies in 17 countries. Let me walk you through a major pilot to give you a little bit of uh, more proof. So we had a pilot, important pilot in 2020 with a major international growth financing. There was a select sample of promising ventures from eight countries. And these companies were subjected to three parallel evaluation methods. There was an investor jury, a team of venture capital professionals who assessed the ventures to handpick the most promising companies to a, to a special pitching event. There was remote evaluation method. There was a diverse group of invited experts scoring all the ventures remotely, independently of each other. Last but not least, we had HIPPO radar applied. So all venture teams responded to HIPPO meter. They received the, they, they received the automated feedback report and became ranked by the algorithm. Let's look at the hit rates now. You're all interested, I'm sure. The hit rate of the investor jury doing the best effort to pick four ventures. They did their work and after the pitching even now, the jury came back and, and confessed to us in our feedback session. The jury concluded that they had selected three right ventures and one wrong venture. So the investor jury got three out of four right. Their hit rate in this pilot 75%. How about remote evaluation? All ventures were evaluated again and scored by remote evaluators independently. 
in the jury's judgment. Now we are using the investor jury as the benchmark in their judgment. Remote evaluation would have selected four entirely wrong ventures to pick. Dramatic, dramatic result in this pile. So remote evaluation in this pile got zero or four right. Hit rate of zero percent in this particular pile. How about hippo radar? So like I said, all participated. The jury was all struck at the end on how Hippo Radar ranked the three right ones, their topics on the top and got the wrong one right. So at the end, Hippo Radar got four of four right and the hit rate was 100%. This pilot proved the concept beyond our wildest expectation. And after this final proof of concept, Hippo Radar has been prepared for market introduction. And today, we could say we celebrate the oven fresh MVP version 1.0. So how does HippoRadar work in practice? You define your criteria. We have filters, you can move them around. You can decide, you will decide how many ventures are to be evaluated. And you then collect contact information and consent from the teams. Each team that will be engaged will be invited to respond to Hippometer. Each receives a confidential report, report with Intel intelligence on the team alignment for improvements. And you receive a financial version which does not cover and include all the confidential elements of the team's report. You receive a financial report on each company a portfolio report with all ventures rated on 35 strategic assets and an online debrief on key findings. And all this can take place within just 14 days. Within 14 days from you delivering us email addresses of the ventures, portfolio companies, applicant companies, companies in, accelera in accelerator, you deliver us email addresses, we send them invitations to, to Hippometer. After it can happen in two weeks that you get a full report and all companies scored and evaluated. All companies get highly valuable strategic intelligence. Your key takeaways from this webinar. Fundraising, nightmare, costs, time and money, big time. We need fundamental change. We need revolution, not just evolution. Third, measurements of investment readiness should be made towards market acceptance based on compatible rating algorithm and build a reference database. Fourth takeaway, Hippo Radar builds trust between founders and financiers. It creates tangible value for both is efficient and reliable, has potential for true game change, and is ready for take. Let's prove it together. Now, dear friends, I'm here for more information and any questions you may have. Oscar, back to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Marco. It was really, really great uh, session. It was, I mean, how, how that deep knowledge that you have was basically to put into that tangible product, making such impact on that process of uh, founders and financiers. So it was really, really amazing to, to see the evolution in that sense, or revolution, as you mentioned. <laughs> yeah, so we have, we have uh, some, some questions. So that was the easy part. Now it's time for the tough moment. <laughs> Getting already, my friend. Yes, yes. Um, so we have like some some questions coming from uh, from the audience. So uh, Luther has two two questions. So the the first one is uh, how is this difference to excellence models? Uh, how is this difference to excellence models? Yes. Um, okay. It is uh, an excellence model within, there is an excellence model within. It is seeking excellence, yes, but here it is directed to market acceptance 
and the deep understand we have the deep understanding baked in into the algorithm of what it takes to reach market acceptance. So, and also it is a algorithm which has we have a scale that is uh, created towards uh, towards all all the all the aspects. So, it's a good question. I would say it is a form of excellence. Well, all right. All right, so more, more questions. So uh, there is another one coming from uh, Luther. So who are the role players, financiers, business owners, and who else? Yeah, okay. So, so HIPAA radar is, is obviously a tool which serves directly the purpose of anyone who wants to assess a number of companies, uh, the investment readiness or growth potential of a number of companies. It can most easily, we could say venture capitalists, government, public sector funding programs who need to evaluate companies. Let's say 100 companies are applying or you would, you would need to finance companies with certain, with, who fill certain criteria. So financiers of public and private sector but also accelerators uh, and incubators, let's say venture competition formats, venture competition events, also corporate venturing programs. These are all folks who would benefit from, from HIPPO radar. And then looking at HIPPO meter, HIPPO meter is relevant to anyone who's working on a high potential business case. Right. And definitely, we will share the, the video with everyone after the, the session. And, and also, I think that uh, Marco has no problem to share the, the whole presentation with the audience, right? Oh, uh, of course, absolutely. And, and everybody, you know, if you have the interest, please, uh, you know, take contact with Oscar, who's the orchestrator of Startup Commons. Uh, be sure that, you know, everything goes through you. Oscar, you, you keep the fort there for us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we are getting more and more questions. So, for example, is HIPPO radar works for NGO sector projects without any profit promised? Well, um, it is. This is a great question. Um, HIPPO radar is, like I said, it's based on HIPPO meter. So, HIPPO meter is the tool, the 360 degree diagnosis tool. So, you can we now, with this question, we have to look more deeply into HIPPO meter, which is the actual device, uh, the tool that helps um, measure the venture or the business case. Uh, it is uh, designed for, with, with, with some particular case in mind, a case in mind, which would, which has a great opportunity in a growing market, yes, for profit, yes, someone who aspires to grow into unicorn. But we already have uh, uh, one interesting uh, use case where we have had hackathon projects, uh, project teams in a series of hackathon, use Hippometer as, as one learning tool and like one tool to create team alignment. Even if the tool itself measures and gives points, more points, the more you are profitable the more you appear to be profitable. If you are a non, non-profit NGO, for example, you know, this is something where you still can create your own language and, and not be bothered then if your profitability score is low. So you can kind of just accept it. So yes, I would say it's, an, it's a possible uh, beneficiary. Yes, exactly. So how many, uh, another question from Patrick. So how many ventures have you assisted to date? So, and what is the entire range of uh, survey results from both venture co-founders and funding sources and any lessons learned informing future product releases of significance? Oh, this is a great question again. Uh, there are, when I look back, there are we could say literally a couple of hundred, there are several hundreds of, there are several hundred companies that have been, that have been tested with the method, with the fundamental method we have. When we look at the more recent, very recent, very, very, let's say, um, diligently look at who 
who've been uh, measured by, by this particular tool now. We have 35 companies which are in the formal pilots, 35 from 17 countries. We have a few hundred, I mean, a few hundred companies that have been then in the, are in the wider database right now in hippo in the hippo meter database. So this is the kind of formal numbers. Um, and when it comes to the takeaways, each of the each of the formal thirty five companies we we've had a, we've had a very diligent uh, um, backlog with them, and all the feedback we receive is that all of them are very all of them. Each of those companies who've used it have been, first of all, happy with this tool. And they all have been, they all announced us that they, they would like to be the first to use it on a regular basis. Today, we only offer Hippometer as a, as a one-time use option. So you can do Hippometer once. We do have Hippometer Pro, which is an account-based system in prototype level. It's a functioning prototype where a hippo team, a venture team, a startup team can have their own account, a Hippometer Pro account, where they can do multiple times Hippometer. They can perform what is called a consensus uh, response to Hippometer, which is a team response based on the averages from the individuals. And, and even more, the tool enables you the team to upload evidence to back each claim from the start. So it builds like a deal room or do diligence readiness from the start uh, for the company. And this is now in, in prototype stage. And uh, this year we will be introducing this also to the marketplace. Excellent. And, and how can we engage with that tool right now? So it, is there any way where basically we can sign up or is, a, is it a subscription model or licensing model? Basically, how we can uh, try that MVP right now? So right now, right today, we have two, two possibilities. Hippo, Hippo Radar is today available through, through partners and directly from Global Enabler. Through you, Oscar, obviously Startup Commons is a place through which we can be reached. So Hippo Radar is ready for, for use but from direct contact. Hippometer is, is something we are not right now pushing actively to individual teams, but it is available. Hippometer has a price point, it's 750 euros. You can, you can uh, get, it, get out and try out Hippometer as a team. So one, one team can use Hippometer today for 750 euros, one time fee. You get the uh, in depth. Uh, in-depth uh, intelligence report out of it. And this is where we stand today. Tomorrow, we go to the account-based model where it's going to be a monthly fee uh, basis for Hippo, Hippo Media Pro. All right. Um, uh, there is an interesting question from Jeremy. So Jeremy says, uh, your justification was based on a, a URI saying who was a right company. Uh, what is the justification for assuming they were right? Ah, so if you look at the if you look at the, um, the, the the pilot, you look at how the pilot was of course now um, summarized for you there. Uh, it was the jury um, investor jury who took their best effort to do the conventional. Uh, this is the best practice we have today. So, so they were trusted by the international uh, financier. So they put these three models to test, the jury, the remote evaluators, and HIPO radar. And the premise is that the jury is the best practice and that's the benchmark. So a live jury, their perception is the best we can have. And they went through the sample and they selected four companies, like I said. And then after the pitching event, the jury came back and they said voluntarily that one of the four companies they selected, they shouldn't have selected. It sort of like was a false positive. And interestingly, they saw that in HIPPO radar scoring, Hippo radar would have not selected, would not have supported selection of that fourth company. So this is the 
this is the uh, justification for us saying someone got someone got something right. It is of course not absolute, but this is uh, in the context of of that pilot. Yeah. Uh, Peter is is also asking, can you explain a bit more how Hippo can be used in the short time frame of hackathons and startup competitions? Okay, so in startup competitions, hackathons are a bit tricky thing because hackathons are something where folks create concepts, you know, during a day, something that doesn't exist in the morning will exist in the afternoon. So it's the toughest test you can have for Hippo meter or Hippo radar. But when it comes to competitions, you know, Hippo, Hippo meter obviously can could be used perhaps today when you get started as one tool that you use if you have a competition. You engage the competitors to take on hippometer. And then on the other hand, you might still want to keep some conventional elements. I don't believe in, in jumping from, from night to day or day to night immediately. There has to be parallel phases where hippometer is introduced. And then we will learn how it actually best serves and helps us uh, free uh, capacity from the live evaluation. Yeah. All right. Um, we're getting to the end. We still have time for maybe a couple of uh, more questions. So is there any fundamental research behind this or is it entirely empirical base? This is, a, I understand the question fully well. I mean, I ran a PhD program for five years as full professor between 2007, 2011. I'm on PhD in 2000. So there is fundamental research, rigorous scientific research. There are a number of PhD theses have come out which are laying the foundation of the whole algorithm. So, so but when it comes to business studies, it comes to entrepreneurship research, I understand the science, the concept of science is very different in that space versus, uh, for example, natural sciences or physics. Yeah. All right. I also have one question for you, Marco. Um, you, you mentioned during the presentation that the importance of building like really balanced algorithm, uh, basically. Uh, and one important key part of that is also how to fit that algorithm with the right data, right? Yes. And, and, and my question is, uh, in terms of data, uh, what data do you have that you could share with an open community, for example? And also, uh, what data would you like to get and how you are basically looking at using that data? That you, it's like a sort of wish list for you. Oh, my goodness. This is <laughs> like talking to Santa Claus. Thank you, Oscar. So. What I would like to see, I mean, that we would together, all, all of this community, we would push hippo radar, hippo meter to the market. So we would get all the hippos in the world measured and in the database. They would start to have the reference database. Every player can then measure their, their portfolio against the global portfolio, against the peer portfolio and so on. And we can start to create AI based tools. I mean, completely new world opens when we have let's say a thousand hippos in a database. We only have a hundred, so you must help us get to 1,000, 10,000 and a million one day. Right. Thank you, Oscar. All right, so I think that uh, we have more questions, but I think that we will share that with, with Marco and then Marco, we can go through through them. And basically we will share with, with the participants over email. Uh, but I think that uh, we can leave it here as we have it. Uh, we, already, we really wanted to focus on having this kind of 60 minute session. So thanks a lot again, Marco, for, for the great presentation and all the questions that you replied. Uh, hope you, you enjoyed this moment with us at the Startup Commons. And, and hopefully we will plan more actions to, together. And, and, and basically uh, we are planning more uh, sessions like this with other kind of uh, solutions and applications and programs that can be beneficial for for the different ecosystem actors. Uh, so, any final words from from your side, Marco? No, Oscar, I want to just thank you for the opportunity, and I, I really look forward to uh, putting uh, the hippos of everybody, you know, into the into the database. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone, and see you soon. Bye.